Okay, so in this video, we'll talk about Puri system. So what is Puri system? Okay, basically, Puri system, we can just define it as it's just a mechanism, which is composed of a rope and a wheel, okay, which is used maybe to, to pull, or you can say to pull heavy objects, maybe up, okay? So we're going to check, we're going to look at um, two cases or two scenarios where we have what? Puri system. Okay, so the first one is if I have, if maybe you are trying to to to, um, to pull something. This is the table. Let me use the white color. So if maybe you have the table, then you are trying to pull that object. How do you do that? Okay. So now. Okay, so if we have that, and let's say we have uh, two objects, now we are pulling them, so, and we have them also there. Okay, now let's consider to say this is M2, this is M1, and let's say maybe this one has got 5 kgs. Or oh, not really five kgs, let's make it ten. Or oh, let's make it three kgs. And let's make this one as eight kgs. Okay. So as we can see, we have talked of uh, tension force. If you have not watched the video under tension force, can you check check it out so that you understand on how to calculate the tension force. Okay, so there we go. So we are saying this this one because it's a rope, we can say this is a tension force, this is a tension force. Now, this tension force which we have, it is connected in the same rope from there all the way up to there. Meaning, the tension force is the same at any point. So if tension 1, tension 2, those two tensions are the same because they are connected to the same rope. Okay? So the first thing which you need to understand is how can you calculate the acceleration? Okay, so we can say this is T1. And we are going to consider to say it is at frictionless. We don't have friction. So if we don't have friction, let's consider to say it's frictionless. So if it is frictionless, we don't have friction. Let's now see. This system will always go in this direction because of the weight of what? Because of the weight of this guy, M1. So we have... M1G because we know that the weight force is just mg. So which m are we talking about? We're talking about m1. So it's going to be m1g. Okay? So from there, we can now come up with a conclusion to say, since we don't have friction in this case, meaning the only force that makes the object to go down, it is the weight of the weight of mass one. Okay? So what should we do? Now, if that is the only force that makes the object to go down, meaning that is the F net. So, according to Newton's second law, we know that F net is just basically what? The applied force. So, the, the force that makes an object to go down is just basically the weight of what? Object or the weight of mass 1. But here, since this guy is not only pulling mass 1, but it is also pulling mass 2. Then we are supposed to add the mass. It's going to be M1 plus M2. We put them there. We do this. Then the weight force is just basically Mg. Then we can say A is just basically this divided by M1 plus M2. So this is the formula which we can use to calculate the what? The acceleration. But now, in some cases where we are having challenges, what we are supposed to do is this. We are supposed to isolate these two guys. So one, let's isolate M2. So if we can have M2 on its own here, we know that the only force which is acting there it is the tension force. Therefore, we are going to say, according to Newton's second row, the F net is going to be equal to the tension force. But here is going to be, here is mass 1, or mass 2, sorry. So it's going to be mass 2 times acceleration is equal to the tension force. Meaning we can call this one as equation 1. Okay, we are done with mass 2. What of mass 1? We can come there and also say we have mass 1. So mass 1, it has got the tension force going there 
up and at, at the same time we have the tension or the weight force which is m1g but if we can check this guy is going down so therefore the acceleration is supposed to be negative it's going in this direction so it is decelerating because we are going to consider that this is the flow so it is decelerating in this direction so the acceleration will be negative therefore so our f net is going to be equal to the tension force is going to be positive because it's going up minus the weight force m m1 g then here we are supposed to include negative ma because the acceleration is negative it's going to be equal to t minus m1 g okay then i need to make t a stable form so it's going to be it's going to be um t is going to be given by uh, m1 g minus m1 a we can call this one as equation 2 so as we can see we said the tension when when uh, when you connect to the same rope when it is connected to the same rope the tension is the same because it is connected to the same what same rope meaning the tension which we have there is the same as the tension which we are going to have there therefore we can set the tension equal to each other then we can how we can say this i can replace m to a with t then i'm going to have m to a is equal to m1 g minus m1 a i want to calculate the acceleration i'll shift m1 a this side to the other side so if i do that then i'm going to have m2 a plus m1 what a is equal to m1 g i want to make a subject of formula a open brackets i will separate that one m2 m1 is equal to m1 g i'll divide everywhere by m2 i'll divide everywhere by m1 plus m2 even here i'll divide it with what m1 plus m2 it's the same thing even if you start with m2 m1 is the same thing therefore we can see that our acceleration is m1 g divided by m1 plus m2 so this is the formula which we can use to calculate the acceleration in this case when we have no friction when it is at frictionless now how can we calculate the tension force let's now plug in the values we see if we can find them the correct answer so there we go so it's going to be our acceleration is equal to i can create the space on top there so we have it's going to be our acceleration is equal to it's going to be acceleration is equal to what is the mass one we have the mass one as 8 kgs there we can put it on top there as 8 kgs times um the g is 9.8 then we also have mass one which is 8 plus 3 so our acceleration therefore is going to be 8 times 9.8 78.4 divided by 11 therefore our acceleration is 7.12 meters per second squared so this is the acceleration now how can we calculate the tension force we came up with two formulas we said the first equation was t is equal to m2 m2a another one was t is equal to it was it was what it was m uh, 1g minus m1 a so we can use any method here but we're supposed to get the same answer let's try now so if we have t is equal to what was our m2 is 3 times our acceleration is 7.2 so now let's find so what is 3 times 7.12 3 times okay. 7.12 we have i'm getting 21.369 newtons then again let's now use this formula so if we use that formula we have the mass 2 which is 8 times 9.8 minus the mass 1 which we have i can write it on top there which is 8 times 7.12 let's now see tension force is 8 times 9.8 17.4 minus 
in open brackets we have 8 times 7.12 so I'm also getting I'm getting 21.44 as we can see 21.44 and 21.20 21.66 they're just the same it's approximately the same answer so either the case you can use this formula and that other formula you are going to get the same answer okay now what if we have got friction how can we calculate the tension force and the acceleration okay now let's consider the same situation but let's say we have friction now how can we find the what the acceleration and the tension force and let's say the mu is 0 0.05 now let's say the the friction is opposing the motion there okay let's now isolate let's now start driving the formulas so we can start with him uh, the first one so if we can isolate that one we know that this is m2 we have got the tension force there we have got the friction force there so according to Newton's second row we know that F net is going to be equal to the tension force minus the friction force because friction force is always opposing motion then we are going to have m to a is equal to t minus the friction force but what is the friction force okay so the friction force is mu times the, the normal force but again what is the normal force we know that the normal force we're talking about this guy is going to have to be m to g that is the the fn now so we're going to have m to a is equal to t minus the mu times m to g so let's solve for t so it's going to be t is equal to i'm going to shift this guy to the other side i'm going to have m to a minus or plus mu m to g we can call this as equation one so we are done with m2 let's now talk of m m1 so we can isolate that one again same thing what we did we have got the tension force we have got it mg m1g this is m1 so acceleration here is negative because it's going down so we're going to say the f net is going to be equal to the tension force is going up minus the m1g but here is ma but ma what because it's negative so it's supposed to be m negative ma is equal to t minus m1a or oh, this one is g sorry this one is g again this one is g so what is it t our t is going to be equal to m1 g minus or plus because now sorry it's supposed to be minus this one is going to be minus still minus m1 a okay two this was the equation two okay so if that is the equation two we we know that the tension is the same because it is connected to the same rope therefore we can set them equal to each other we can just lab on top there we can create space so if we create space on top there we know we will not okay let's create space so if we that we do that we have come up with the one formula one to say t is equal to m2 a plus mu m2g as our equation one then the second equation is t is given by m1g minus m1a okay and we have said this is equation two now we can set those two guys equal to each other because the tension at any point as long as it's connected to the same rope it is the same it doesn't change meaning we can set those guys equal to each other okay therefore we can say we are going to replace this guy we, we are going to set them equal to each, each other it's same as t is equal to t so we're going to set them equal to each other then i'm going to say i'm going to say um m2 a plus the mu m2 g is the same as m1 g minus m1 a it's the same but i want to calculate the what the acceleration i'll shift this guy to the other side i also shift this guy to the other side okay then if i do that i'm going to have m2a 
plus m1 a is equal to m1 g minus mu m2 g but again this is the same as if i put m1 a plus i've not changed anything it's the same thing okay now from there we can make a a subject of formula or we, we can isolate a then we have this is equal to m1 g minus mu m2 g so we divide everywhere by m1 plus m2 everywhere by m1 plus m2 then our acceleration is going to be equal to m1 g minus mu m2 g then m1 plus m2 let's now plug in the values let's plug in there so what is m1 m1 is 8 so we have 8 times 9.8 we put them minus the mu is 0 0.05 oh i don't have enough space there let's do it to the other side we can just do it from here say acceleration is equal to m1 is 8 times 9.8 put them in brackets minus the mu is 0 0.05 times mass 2 is 3 times the g is 9.8 everything divided by what 3 plus 8 if you do that you should be able to find 9.8 8 times 8 answer minus open brackets 0 0.05 times 3 times 9.8 should be able to get 76.93 on top there divided by 11 I'm getting 6 I'm getting 6.99 meters per second squared so as we can see without friction we found that the answer was about 7.12 meters per second squared but now we have added friction but ju just because the friction the kinetic friction is less that's why it has just reduced a bit 6.99 so under un under the influence of friction the acceleration has to reduce so the acceleration even the, the 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 friction depends on the coefficient kin uh, the kinetic of friction if the coefficient kinetic of friction is is much higher you are going to discover that the acceleration is going to be less okay so it's inverse proportion to each other perfect now these are the only scenarios which we need to understand here now there is another case where you are putting in both side now you have got the mass in both side how do we do that okay so now from here before we, we we move we can also calculate the acceleration oh sorry we can also calculate the what the tension force how can we calculate the tension force you have your formulas already on top there so there is no need of you panicking because you have derived the formulas already you can use either the first one or the second one the answer has to come out the same okay so let's see Let's start with the first one. M2 was what? M2 is um, 3 times the acceleration is 9.6.99 plus the mu is 0 0.5, 0 0.05 times 3 times 9.8. <laughs> Let's find the tension force. So we have 3 times times we have 3 times 6.99 plus open brackets 0 0.05 times 3 times 9.8 okay so we should be able to get i'm getting 22.4 but let's let's redo it 3 times 6 point this is 6.99 it's not 609 this is point here 6.99 plus open brackets 0 0.05 times 3 times 9.8 okay i'm getting the same 
so I'm getting 22.44 newtons let's now use the second formula the second formula we have m1 it was m1 g minus m1 a let's now see 8 times 9.8 minus our m1 is also 8 our acceleration is 6.99 we should be able to get when 2.44 as well so 8 9.8 times 8 78 minus open brackets 8 times 6.99 okay cool i'm getting i'm getting 22.48 which is just approximately the same so it's just some uh round off which we did here under acceleration but we are supposed if we if we didn't round off there or we just made it as seven would have gotten the same answer 22.44 even here 22.44 okay so this is the case which you need to understand the next one is uh, we need also to understand something else the same thing under pulley system the moment when you get here I don't think you're going to have challenges even when we reach an under secular motion. Okay, let's not forget to subscribe to this channel. Okay, so now there are some cases where we have what if we have this kind of policy system? Then we we have masses there so have masses there and this same let's say this is m1 this is m2 we know that this is the tension force we say d the tension force as long as they're connected to the same rope they are the same it doesn't change it's the same thing okay so we don't we'll be ignoring the what in the friction there there is no friction okay so guys generally speaking let's say this is 8 kgs and let's say this is 5 kgs genuinely speaking this system will be moving in this direction because the weight of m1 is going to be greater than the weight of what m2 they all have weight force but uh, you are going to discover that if you do because this one this is heavier than m2 therefore the system has to go there okay now upon knowing that we can calculate the acceleration and the tension force those are the things which you need to understand here so how can you do that so as we can see if this system is going in this direction we know that as it is going up the acceleration here at, at m2 is going to be positive but the acceleration at m1 is going to be negative the moment when you know that you are home and dry so there we go now we are going to isolate one one let's start with m2 so if i come here and we say this is we agree that this is m2 and we know that it is m2 we know that we are going to have the weight force which is m to g at the same time we have the tension force so let's now come up with an equation so according to newton's second law the f net is going to be tension is going up minus the weight force is going down so here is going to be m2a because acceleration is positive we just plug in positive is equal to t minus m2g let's solve for t it's going to be t is equal to m2a plus m2g you can call this one as equation one let's now go for m1 so if i go there for m1 let's put it somewhere there if I come here and we say this is M1, it also have the tension force. It also have the what? The weight force, which is M1G. But the acceleration has to be what? Here the acceleration is positive. But here the acceleration has to be negative because it's decelerating now. So let's now come up with F net. So our F net is going to be equal to the tension force minus the M1G. But now, which M are we talking about? We're talking about M1, but it's supposed to be minus M1A because acceleration is negative. Is equal to T minus M1G. Let's solve for T. 
t is going to be given by m1 g minus m1 a so we can call this one as equation 2 we are saying the tension is the same we have come up with two equations okay let's check we have come up with two equations so if we can check we have come up with two equations we can say we can put them there and this set them equal to each other so we have we have come up with that the tension is given by m2a plus m2g the second one was is um, m1 g m1g minus m1a so if these two guys are the same what can we do we can just set them equal to each other and then we solve for what then we solve for we solve for acceleration so if we can set these guys we know that t is going to be equal to t so the first t is we can put them there to a plus m2 g equals this t is now this one so we can say m1 g minus m1 a we can shift this guy to the other side because i want to solve for acceleration again at the same hand we can shift this guy to the other side i'm going to have m to a plus m1 a is equal to m1 g minus m2 g i solve for a so see the simple thing then we put this anyway it's the same thing even if i start with m1 so let's start with m2 okay so our acceleration is going to be given by m1 g minus so here we have forgotten g it's supposed to be like this then we have m what we have m2 plus m1 so let's plug in the values we see the acceleration which we are going to get m1 is what 8 times 9.8 minus m2 is 5 times 9.8 everything divided by m1 is m28 plus 5 okay so 9.8 times 8 minus 5 times 9.8 I'm getting divided by 13 because 8 plus 5 is 13 right it's 13 okay so divided by 13 I'm getting 2.26 2.26 meters per second squared that is the acceleration now the second question which they are going to ask you is which you need to, to, to know is how to find the what the tension force so you have derived the equations already there is no need of you panicking you just go there and start now plugging in the values so we can start with the first one we have this the first equation let's plug in the values m2 is 5 times acceleration we'll find that is 2.26 plus m2 again is 5 times 9.8 there we are getting 5 times 2.26 plus 5 times 9.8 we are getting 60.3 newtons let's use the other formula we see if the answer which we are getting is going to be the same so i'm ju in this video i'm just showing you on how to find the f uh, acceleration and then when we are finding the um, the tension force we are using we are using uh, both equations right but you only use one equation here we are just trying to prove to say this these formulas they can work you can use any any formula and it's going to work for you okay so now let's check our t is going to be our m1 is 8 times 9.8 
then we have minus 8 times 2.26 okay so we have 8 times 9.8 minus okay minus uh, 2 minus open brackets minus open brackets 8 times 2.26 2 okay I'm also getting 60.32 newtons so as you can see this guy 60.3 and 60.32 is the same right yeah so this is how we can calculate this is how we can work out the problems of what polysystem. Thank you for watching this video.